Okay, finally left uh, Wisconsin. Um, actually, right on the borderline of uh, Wisconsin and Illinois. I'm in the Illinois side right here, but the Wisconsin border is just a few steps. I could actually walk down the beach and, and get to uh, get to the Wisconsin side. But this was a very interesting little uh, marina here. It's a little cove, uh, very well protected. And uh, the this particular marina here is uh, it's called uh, Skipper Bob or a skipper bod, something like that. Anyway, on the other side of this marina, right next to it, uh, on the other side of the parking lot, is a uh, is another marina, which I'll show you here uh, a little bit further down. Um, this is where I stay tied up. It's a public boat ramp, and I figured, well, if nobody comes and tells me I got to move, then... I'll be, you know, in this nice little cove from protected waters. As you can see, uh, there are the breaker walls there to kind of protect you from from uh, any bad waves or any strong winds that might be coming. This was a long dock uh, to get way out there. You can see where the boat is way out there. And here the, are the public uh, boat docks right here. Uh, they're maintained by the state, so it's kind of like a little state park here. Uh, and there really wasn't a sign that said I couldn't stay there, so I decided, well, the, the most they can do is tell me I got to move. If that happens, then uh, I would just untie and drop anchor uh, right here in the same little cove, uh, and that way I don't have to worry about uh, any strong winds coming or the weather getting bad because the, the little cove is pretty well protected with these uh, breaker walls on both sides. And uh, it, even when it gets windy, uh, it doesn't create a whole lot of wakes in here. So it's still nice. Um, this is the other marina I was telling you about. And this particular marina boasts that it is the largest freshwater marina in the U.S. Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what one of the employees was saying, that it is the largest uh, marina. Uh, in the U.S., or the largest freshwater marina here in the U.S. Uh, here I am uh, the next day, getting ready to take off. Now, when I left Racine, I, I traveled halfway to Chicago, which put me at this little place. It's called Winthorpe. Uh, and uh, this is about the halfway point to Chicago. And I, I just can't wait to get off the lake. You know, it's Lake Michigan, uh, like all the other lakes. You know, it has its temper temper uh, when it wants to be. Uh, so you got to be pretty careful when you're out here. Uh, right now, it's nice and calm, as you can see. But I'm still within the breaker walls, as you can see there. So as long as you stay within the breaker walls, you're okay. Once you get out on the other side of the breaker walls, well... That's a different question. Now you got to find out, well, is it bad out there or is it okay to travel? Uh, I haven't really had what you would call an, an exceptional day uh, on the lakes for exception of maybe two days at the most. And uh, one was on Lake Erie. The other one was on Lake Heron. I've yet to have a, a, a smooth where there is no waves on Lake Michigan. There's always been something uh, not bad, in, uh, but it does slow you down. And uh, again, it, it's been three lakes now that I've been in for quite a few months. And uh, I'm really, really, you know, getting ready to, hey, let's call it quits with the lakes and let's get into Chicago and let's start seeing what the river's going to be like. I have a funny feeling when I get down through the rivers, uh, you know, you're going to go through the Illinois River, the Chicago River, the Illinois River, uh, then the, oh, the Mississippi River, the Ohio River for a little part, the Tennessee River, and then what they call the Tombee Waterway, which comes out in Mobile, Alabama. So I'm kind of anxious to see what kind of 
conditions are on these rivers here. Uh, I would imagine I'm going to have a little bit better luck as far as traveling uh, because they're rivers. They're not very large bodies of water, so they're not very wide. And they could probably be a lot easier on the pounding on the boat and all of that. And you probably don't get these huge wakes that you would get like when you're on Lake Michigan or or when you're out on, let's say, on open water like in, uh, let's say, the Gulf or on Chesapeake Bay or uh, the the Great the Great Lakes here. Uh, but it, it's I'm I'm getting anxious because I want to get out of this lake here and start down down river which should also help because of the fact that now all the way down to mobile for the exception of on the ohio river you're actually going down river so you're going with the current and it should help you uh, not only allow you to go a little bit faster uh, at the same rpm but also save you on fuel so i'm kind of hoping that's the case that's going to be the case uh, when you get on the Ohio River, though, you do have to go about 40 miles upstream on the Ohio River to get you into the Tennessee River. Uh, but it's it's not it's not that bad because you're only talking about 40 miles. I can do that in a day and get out get out of the Ohio River and back into the Tennessee River. Uh, as you can see, I'm I'm bouncing around a little bit, uh, but it's not terribly bad um, and the winds start pick up a little bit more and a little bit more the little further south I start heading and you can start seeing you know that uh, I'm bouncing up more and more uh, but that's the way it's been the whole trip uh, on all the lakes Lake Erie, Lake Heron, Lake Michigan this is the kind of weather that you know you've kind of had to deal with and you think you know oh my god you know how can somebody enjoy boating on the lakes like this. Uh, some people say, though, there's some days where the lake is smooth as glass, but I haven't seen it. I saw I saw it one time on Lake Erie uh, one day, uh, which was the only good day I had in Lake Erie, uh, and then I had one good day in uh, Lake Heron, uh, which it also was the same thing. It was almost smooth as glass, but anyway, here we go. We're heading uh, south, and uh, we are probably going to end up stopping, which here we are. We did stop uh, before we got to Chicago. Now, from this little place right here, Windermere, I think it was called, or uh, when I'm at uh, Marina, uh, it's a yacht club. It's a private yacht club. They really don't have transit slips here. Uh, but they had one marine that they, they had somebody that had pulled their boat out for the season already, and and he wasn't planning on coming back, so uh, they they said I could go ahead and tie up on his space and just stay overnight since I was only staying overnight and then moving on in the morning. Uh, this was and this was a nice little marina. Also, I did kind of it, it was so weird because this is the first time I had seen. Uh, these boats, these sailboats right here are on land. You can walk up and down and get on them off the docks and off the piers. But the other sailboats that are over to the right side, uh, those are on docks, but there's no way to get off and on on those docks. So what they do is they have, uh, they hire these kids uh, well, they're not kids. I call them kids because they they look young to me. But they hire these these kids to uh, sh shuttle you back and forth from your boat to to the shore. Like here's the three boats right here that they use to shuttle you back and forth. And when you, when you come in uh, right here to the marina, you can see there's a one of the young girls sitting there on the chair, and then. Uh, here's one of the guys taking somebody out to their boat uh, on these little skiffs, and they have three of them, and uh, they do this all day long. They just travel back and forth, taking people back and forth to their boat and to the shore. Uh, then uh, after a while, I decided to, to walk around, and I end up at this beach out here, 
Uh, this is on Lake Michigan. This is Lake Michigan here. And you can see the winds are, are picking up a little bit. Uh, poor little dog had quite a long ways to go uh, to go get this rope that his owner throws out. And, you know, these dogs love to go out and grab them and bring them back. But uh, he sure had to go a long ways to get this one here. Uh, I think he decided, you know what? Uh, that was too far out. I'm, I'm not going to be doing this all day long. So what does he do? He decides to take the the uh, frisbee that got thrown out, and he goes and lays it way out there by the tree line, and drops it out there. He probably figures, hey, if the owner wants to walk all the way out here and get it, then uh, he can come get it. Uh, and <laughs> he then he comes back without it, and the owner has another one in his hand, and he goes and throws that out, and there goes the poor little dog. I mean, he's probably enjoying it. It's good exercise for them. And uh, they like doing stuff like that. Going into the water, grabbing uh, whatever you throw out there for them. But anyway, it's a, it's a pretty nice beach. Uh, there, there was a lot of seaweed, uh, a lot of grass along the edge and stuff like that. But all in all, it was not a bad beach. It's sandy beach. I did notice there was some rocks on the on uh on the bottom there so bringing in a boat or something like that close to shore was kind of iffy uh, because you could hit a rock instead of you know running that on the beach and hitting the sand but you can see there are boats out there that are boating and stuff like that and the lake doesn't look bad from here but when you get close and you start seeing these wakes coming up and down you can see it, it's serious winds up there right now uh here, here they are again. Uh, here's one of the girls taking some cup, some people out to their boats, and while she's doing that, you can you can see right here. Here comes the guy who just dropped off uh, some people at their boats, and uh, over there by where the other boat is going now, you can see there's another boat coming in now. So there was all three boats out running around picking up people. And bringing them back to shoreline uh, <clears throat> because it's it's weird I had never seen a marina that had docks but no way to get to the dock the only way you can get to the docks on these things is by these little boats here they take you out there and then they bring you back and they have somebody 24 7 here uh, working all night long uh, at night they only have one person during the day, they had, you know, they had these three kids, and uh, at night, they only had one gentleman that stays up all night, and he kind of, I guess, kind of cleans up a little bit, does some maintenance work, and and then also um, takes people in and out when they need to, but at night, he says he doesn't get but maybe two or three different, two or three people go out or have to get to their boats or whatever, and the way you, you notify these guys is you blow your horn on your boat and that lets them know that hey you need a ride to shore and then they'll go around looking for you and see where you where you're at uh, and they said most of the time they've gotten used to hearing the horn and knowing where the sound came from so uh, when you blow your horn a few minutes later uh, they show up and you get on it and then they bring you down to shore uh, or they also said or they can use their cell phone and call them and has to be picked up, and they'll come in out and pick you up and bring you in. Uh, but it, it was pretty unique because I had never seen this done before uh, in any marina that I've been in. So uh, I, I guess it's it's worth it. It's a yacht club, so it's kind of more of a privately owned yacht club. Uh, they don't really have transit slips, and they don't have. Uh, oh, they did have fuel. Uh, now that I realize that, uh, but. Uh, because the guy that I was at that slip where I was at, because the guy was I had already pulled his boat out for the season and nobody was going to be using it, uh, they allowed me to go ahead and tie up and just stay there. Didn't even charge me for it. So uh, here uh, here we are leaving the little uh, yacht club now. And from here, it'll be going into Chicago now. And once you're in Chicago, that's it. You're out of the lakes. No more lakes. It'll be river. Chicago River actually turns into the Illinois River. 
uh, and I'm, I'm kind of anxious to see what it's going to be like. Like I said, I, I have a funny feeling it's going to be uh, pretty smooth running from there on all the way down to Mobile, Alabama, uh, because you're not fighting these big bodies of water anymore. Now you're fighting just rivers and small lakes along the way. And, uh, it, it, and like I said, you're going down current. So it not only helps you with, with better mileage, uh, it also, of course, better mileage gives you, uh, less fuel costs. Uh, that's the one thing, you know, I'm still running over 50% on my fuel. Uh, 50% of my whole expenses is fuel. Uh, so, uh, I do pay, you know, to stay at sometimes in marinas where I can use the facilities there, the showers and, and the laundry. And, and I'm able to take my little electric bike and go grab some groceries and, and little things that I might need here and there. Uh, so I do spend, and, and when I do, when I am at a marina, I also get to plug into electricity and water. So I get to wash down the boat at least, uh, not necessarily, you know, clean it with soap and water, but at least rinse her down and get her looking halfway decent. And, uh, she's going to need a good clean when I get back home. Definitely. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, below on, on the water line that sticks to the boat that I can't clean unless I'm, you know, get it to a beach somewhere where I can walk around it and, and scrub the bottom. But I figure I can do that when I get home because if, if I clean it now, it's going to just get dirty again. So I might as well just wait till I get home. Uh, and here we are, like I said, now we're leaving uh, Winthrop uh, Marina. And uh, I'm sorry, that's not Winthrop. That's where we just left. This was, uh, hmm, Wyanette, I think, or Wyanette Marina Yacht Club or something like that. Uh, it, it was pretty nice. <clears throat> and as soon as you, um, uh, uh, come out of here, you saw that big temple that was right, almost right next to the marina here. Apparently there's a uh, t well, these temples are built one in every continent. There is one of these temples here. And I guess well, this is, happens to be the place where uh, the, this one was built in the U.S. And, or in the continent here. Uh, but uh, I don't understand why you would only want one temple built in each continent. Now they say it's a pretty nice museum. Uh, you, you can go in there and uh, I guess they want you to be a Buddhist or whatever, uh, whatever religion that happens to be. But uh, you, they do give, uh, they do have, it's open and you can go in there and you can uh, walk through there and see some of the history behind the, the temples. And um, it, they also have like a museum inside of them. And it's huge. It's a huge place. Uh, sometimes it's not... Uh, it's not hard to, to visualize how big this thing really is, but I actually saw this from a long ways as I was coming in. Uh, I could see it, and I kind of used it as a reference point. Uh, I didn't know I was going to come into this little marina here, but I thought, okay, I know that, you know, Chicago is past this place. So I knew I had to get to this place before I got to Chicago. So I used it as a reference point from a long ways because it, it really does stand out. Uh, and uh, as I was coming out, there was also a, a dome stadium that was built. Uh, I think it's for the uh, for the college that was down here also. Uh, <clears throat> it's a small college. I think I uh, can't remember the name of the college. Uh, I went into town a few times with my bike and they had, you know, these little shops where they sell all the uh, mobile, all the college stuff. And it looked like most of it was purple color. So uh, it's got to be one of those Northwest, I don't know, maybe Northwest or something like that. But anyway, uh, as I was going out, uh, you were able to see uh, a picture of the uh, of the dome. Now, you can see as soon as I leave the, the breaker walls, you can see the boat. It starts to go up and down some more. And 
Uh, it doesn't doesn't really look like it's much, and it's not that bad, but it is something. I mean, that slows you down, as you can see, because you got to be jumping up and down over these wakes all day long. Uh, I've kind of learned to uh, go a little bit faster. I've kind of learned to, to go a little bit faster and try and jump uh, on from one wake onto the other one. Uh, and, and it kind of helps uh, as far as the pounding. You know, it doesn't pound up and down. So here I'm, I should be going a little bit faster so that I can, and then I do, I pick up speed later on today. Right now, you can see here I'm still uh, moving along, but uh, I'm starting to see, you can see the, the skyline from Chicago uh, way in the background there. Toward the, toward the right side. That's Chicago skyline. Uh, and I'm probably 10, 11 miles away from Chicago. And thank God, because when I get there, I'm out of the lakes. No more lakes. And uh, going into Chicago is like, I can't wait to get there. Just couldn't wait to get there. But of course, weather permitting, and of course, what the lake, I'm going to have to just go along with the lake and and follow what the lake wants me to do or what I can and can't do because you don't play around with these lakes. Uh, it was fun. I enjoyed them. Uh, you had to be pretty careful as far as when to cross, uh, when to take off, and when to be on the lake or not because they do get pretty serious uh, foul weather real quick. Uh, I ran into a couple of days when, when that happened to me, and... Luckily, because I stayed close to shore, I wasn't too far away from a safe haven. Uh, I was able to duck into, you know, a creek or a little wall or something like that and kind of save face on here. But there's that uh, stadium that I was telling you about, uh, the college stadium there. And then here shortly, you'll see uh, the the temple uh it's toward the back now. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a, a new s a stadium that was built, and it's an auditorium and a stadium that was built for the college there. Um, but I pointed my boat toward uh, the skyline of Chicago and decided, okay, here we come, Chicago. So this is going to be about uh, mainly coming into Chicago. I haven't yet, you know, this part, this part right here is just coming into Chicago. Uh, I didn't really record the, uh, in Chicago yet, which will be on the next, on the next video. It'll be me actually going into Chicago and going through Chicago and down the, uh, Chicago river and into the Illinois river. And I, then I should have a better idea of what kind of traveling, uh, I'm going to be able to do while I'm on the river. Uh, I'm hoping a lot better than these lakes here. As you can see, you know, I'm bouncing up and down. Uh, and this is a everyday occurrence while you're on the lakes. So if you're thinking of doing the Great Loop, these are the things you have to consider. Uh, Chesapeake Bay was one of them. Uh, the Three Lakes uh, was the other one. And of course, uh, you have Tampa Bay. You also have Sarasota Bay in Florida. Uh, you have uh, Port Charlotte uh, over there also to contend with. So you do have some large bodies of water that you have to cross. And when you're doing that, you always have to consider is, uh, you know, what kind of weather you do. You, it is when you're crossing them because, like I said, this is fairly fairly good weather for being on Lake Michigan. But as you can see, I, I, I'm going up and down. I'm not. It's not like I'm just you know smooth sailing here, um, and I'm traveling as as fast as I can without getting bounced around all over the place. Uh, so it 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 kind of it it wasn't bad, but it was just kind of annoying and after a while after you've been on all three lakes you kind of you kind of think to yourself come on let's hurry up and let's get out of these lakes uh it was fun while i was here but i've had enough and it's time to move on 
And I just can't wait to see what it's going to be like to be on the rivers. Um, I know what it's what it's like to be on the Three Lakes now. Uh, and uh, all in all, it, it was fun. It was exciting. I wouldn't change anything. Uh, I'm still enjoying the trip. Uh, there's still, to me, there's still a lot of things that I want to see and I want to look at and see what's going on. Uh, but uh, all in all, Chicago, here we come. We're getting close. And uh, as soon as my next video comes up, then that'll show us actually going into Chicago and through Chicago. And uh, there's a part of that stadium again that I was showing you. So uh, I should be, you know, in Chicago probably in another two hours. Uh, and then I'm going to decide what, whether I want to keep going into Chicago or keep moving or find a place. There's that temple there. You can see that dome. And now that dome is quite a ways now from now, from here or where I'm at. And it's still visible. And it was visible from a long ways also. So it kind of helped me keep track of where I was at. Uh, and uh, you can see the water looks good until you know you head a certain direction and then the wakes start hitting you i wasn't going with the wakes i was going against the wakes and that's why i'm bopping up and down when you go with a wake they actually help you uh, as far as going faster because it's like you're surfing on top of the wake and then when the wake picks you up it, it's like being on a surfboard and you surf up over the wakes until uh, eventually you fall off the wake and then you have to wait for another wake to come by and pick you up and there you go again. Uh, sometimes it picks you up pretty quick and, and it can pick up. You can go from <clears throat> from uh, doing 8 miles an hour to doing up to 12 miles an hour while you're surfing on one of these wakes here, depending on how big they are. The bigger ones will pick you up and they'll take you a long ways. Of course, they want to take you where not where you want to go, but wherever they want to go. So that's the other thing you have to be careful with is that uh, you have to try and, and keep them from pushing you sideways and then flipping you over. But uh, these wakes are not that big. They're not capable of doing uh, that. Uh, these wakes are way too small to do that. But it's fun when they pick you up and then they surf you uh, up over the wakes and uh, mainly because it picks up speed and, and you can kind of see the difference of how fast you can go uh, by having these wakes pick you up. But now I'm going up against the wakes. So uh, instead of the wake picking me up and taking me, uh, they're actually just bouncing me up and down over the wake. Uh, if you go fast enough, you can normally jump the wakes, but that's not easy to do. So you kind of have to learn to uh, adjust your speed to where you're most comfortable with. Uh, sometimes you can uh, sometimes you can speed up or sometimes you can slow down and get a better reading. Um, uh, and that's what I was doing here. I was trying to figure out what's a comfortable place to travel. But anyway, this is the end of this film right here. As you can see, there's Chicago skyline.